so polish is the thing. Everyone wants to know about polish, how to do polish, and yet in my opinion is probably one of the most uh, simple things to do in terms of workflow. The thing is that polish itself, the methodology is very repetitive, is highly time consuming, and you have to be open uh, uh, to a process of uh, trial and error. Lots of things can happen in order to get uh, results that are fine. So I wanted to use this, uh, this class uh, as an extract of the workshop that we just re released recently, uh, the first workshop uh, of, the, of the Snappy Run, in order to tell you how myself, how I do polish. Remember animation is a craft and it relies a lot in uh, practice and probably polish is one of those processes that shows the best how important is practice, how important is uh, the time and to let the eye little by little uh, make use to, you know, to, to see those tiny subtle little changes in each frame in the movement that puts all the frames together in order to create something that has, let's say, that high quality polish that the standard of the film industry requires. So the point is that most likely you won't be able to do a very good polish in the first, let's say, I don't know, 10 uh, shots that you do. So my recommendation here is that um, whatever the process of uh, methodology or workflow that you find to do on polish, you stick with it and you still do that for a long, long time and you practice, you practice, you practice till little by little your eyes and your skills get in tune in that, let's say, in that kind of specific uh, uh, work. Because as I was saying, it's a very subtle kind of thing. Your eye has to be trained. So, so be patient. So let's have a look to this class and I hope that you learn something from it. Okay, so more or less at this point, all the parts of the body have already a key. But if we look at the cycle a little bit closer, we can see how some trajectories are still not working quite pretty good. I brought my cycle to Premiere because it's easier for doing this kind of exploration without worrying about looping issues and all that. So for something, something that I'm not very happy is with the, with the upper chest. So I can see that it, it still has like a lots of movement. You can see that it, it goes forward. It's creating like a lots of, it's coming forward very much a lot. So I'm not very happy with that. Something that I also am seeing here is that the feet, there's some issues in one of the feet that is coming backwards. So let's do this. The, let's start doing some polish. So the way to do the polish is basically to go over all the key parts of the character frame by frame, follow the trajectories and to make sure that we have nice and clean trajectories and also making sure that we have an, a good sense of energy and a good uh, spacing. And by good sense of energy and good spacing, I mean that we have at least proper is-ins and is-outs. That's why we call all this part of the process uh, polishing because basically we go very in deep detailing in all these aspects that I just mentioned. So the key parts of uh, the character and it's important that we follow this, uh, this um, order is the first or COG then the upper chest and the head, I will follow them together. Then we're going to be following the tiptoes. Then we do the heels. And lastly, the hands. As an extra pass when we finish that, I like to usually do a pass where I follow up elbows and knees. So these are going to be all the points that are going to be following up one by one, frame by frame and following the right order that I just mentioned.
So basically what I do is a very uh, straightforward system that I repeat all the time, which is following up trajectories. And as you can see here, for example, I just um, have used my own skin tool in order to see more or less what's the trajectory that this part of the head is doing, right? So I can see that, for example, I have this kind of like S shape. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to this part of, or to this frame. Since usually what I do is I work together head and upper chest, I'm going to just simply work here with the upper chest and I'm going to bring this guy back. Maybe actually it's just a matter also of adding a little bit of rotation in just that particular frame. That feels better. Something that, for example, I don't like here is that if I look at this part of the body and this part of the body in the frame number four, they more or less have like a similar spacing going is going down. And the idea is that we create a nice sense of a squash and a stress right at the body as it comes down, up and down. So I'll be working on a little bit on that now. Working with the trajectories with the, with the hands, what I'm looking for is to create like a nice curve, okay, with a nice moment of um, holding a little bit extremes and easings and outs. Both hands. Okay, and uh, once that we are more or less happy with the trajectories that we have. We can go ahead and start working a little bit with uh, the formers. You can uh, start to apply a little bit more of the squash and stretch or more smears. For example, we can do that with the hands. I can see that a good opportunity to do that is in this frame, right? If we look at this hand, we can see that there is like a nice, a lot of space here because the, the hand is going this direction, right? So we have a big space in here that is going on, right? All this. So here it would be a very nice opportunity to create like a nice drag or like a nice, yeah, uh, smear or stretch, however you want to call it. So for that, we can use these controls here. Remember always to that we don't overdo this, right? So it's always a good idea to reset and just to key uh, to key that particular um, key that we like before and after we put it back to zero. 
the other spot where we can do some uh, smears or squash and stretch or drags using the deformers that we have is with the head. We can either use these controls here or the tiny little ones. Just for example to create that nice sense of drag. And lastly, uh, once that more or less we're happy with all the deformations that we have, a last pass that we have to do, that also can be a little bit time consuming, is just to go over all the parts of the body and do like a nice clean up of all the shapes, same as we did at the very beginning. We do like a good clean up with the, you know, with the shapes, making sure that we don't have like noises in in some parts of our shapes, like here, for example, these joints, I can see that it needs some cleanup here. Uh, in this part too, we need some cleanup too. So let's just switch on basically all the controls that we have and and use them all in order to, you know, just to start cleaning things up and make it look good. Just make sure that if, for example, you are working with the knees or with the elbows, so just with working with the trajectories, right, and all that, make sure that if you are cleaning some things up, some shapes, that you are not uh, altering too much those trajectories that you already set up. So this is how more or less it looks. Um, I think that we only just need one last pass, which is the face. 